From Baofeng Tech, B Tech is a UV 25 by two, a dual band mini mobile radio, which includes VHF, UHF in a small package. We're gonna talk about it right now. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of lots of things that are new in amateur radio. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. We're going to talk about this not-so-new radio today. So this is a Baofeng Tech UV 25 by 2 The UV is for UHF, VHF. The 25 means it's a 25-watt radio, and the by 2 means it's dual band. So the UV and the by 2 are kind of redundant. Um, although, you know, just because it's a dual band doesn't mean it has to be UHF and VHF. So that's just the way they number it. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that's what the model numbers are. They have a UV 50 by 2 and a UV 50 by 3. I've done some videos on those in the past. So go check out this channel for more of those videos after you complete this one. We're going to do an unboxing of this real quick and just going to show you what's in the box. Very short and sweet. Then we're going to put it on the power meter and see, see what kind of output it does. It's advertised at 10 watts on low and 25 watts on high, so we're going to test that on the power meter today. Moving over here to BTEC's website, you can see right here, this is kind of what it looks like. It's got a four-band, or it's got a four-line display, I should say. So you can display the call sign of the repeater and the actual frequency of the repeater. Uh, the call sign is just a name. You can put anything in there you want to. You could call it Dallas repeater. You could call it Houston or Atlanta or whatever. Okay. So the W where it says WB4 PZA right there, that's a name that you choose in programming. It's got a really nice DTMF microphone there. It, you can change colors on the screen like that. There's a look at the back of the radio. It's got a data port and it's got an external speaker port with a small fan on the back. Of course, just one SO239 for a single antenna. And that's everything that comes in the box right there. So I guess I don't need to show you an unboxing because that's everything right there. But it does boast about 25 watts on high and 10 watts on low. It's got a frequency range of receive only from 68 to 108 megahertz, 65 to 108 megahertz. So it'll receive FM broadcast radio reception. Full transmit from 136 to 174. Full transmit from 400 to 520. Wideband, narrowband, selectable. It's a quad watch receiver, which means it'll monitor, which to me says that'll monitor four bands at the same time. You can configure your 25 by two for simultaneous VHF, VHF, or UHF, UHF operation too. So I'm not sure what quad watch means because it's only a dual band radio, but maybe you can watch four channels at a time. I don't know. Maybe we'll check that out here in a minute. It does have 200 uh, channel, 200 memory channels in it and a very loud two watt internal speaker. So that's a good thing there. It does have, if you go to the software tab over here, it's got chirp and import previous frequencies. So it is chirp compatible. It's advertising that the... 50 by 2, the 25 by 2, and the 25 by 4 have been added to Chirp. It says update, but I don't know how old that is. After, you know, at the time of this recording and therefore afterwards, it is now supported by Chirp, regardless of how long that's been on there. So a lot of times people come by the channel and they ask, well, do, can, I, can I use Chirp to program this radio? And the answer for this radio is yes, you can. You can use Chirp to program the radio. So I know that's going to make a lot of you guys happy. So let's go over here real quick, and I'm just going to go ahead and just do this, you know, you already saw what was in the box on the website there. So this is how big it is right here. It does have a bracket, microphone, um, and a power cable coat. Okay, so it doesn't come with a programming cable. It comes with a power cable, a bracket, a microphone, and a, and a manual, which is fine. It's fine. So for reference and size, I am going to show you this is the radio itself, of course. This is my ICOM ID52. So it's about the same height as an ID52 without the antenna, of course. It's like that. And it's maybe one and a half times as wide as the ID52. So this is an HT radio, obviously, their newest D-Star HT. And this is the size of that radio. So we're going to plug it up right now, put it on power meter, and see what we've got. This is the screen of the radio. You can see right here that it's, it is actually quad display. 
because I changed the top band to 146.52, and I changed the third band to 441.0. We're going to do some power testing on that. You see the L at the top. This is the microphone right here. Uh, this this uh, goes into the, there's a menu button. So we can see that. TMR, that's menu zero. You see over there at the, the zeros at the top right of the menu screen. One, it goes to 2.5. Kilohertz steps, that's good to know. It goes it has 61 menus. Okay, so there's quite a few menus in this thing. Okay, so there's different buttons on the, the uh, microphone there. The one that says star scan and the one that says pound lock, you can do, you obviously scan it, hold down the lock, will lock the screen like that right there. You can unlock it by long pressing the lock button. So, looking for the power setting in here. Usually it's labeled as TXP. Right there. Okay, so menu up. It's got two power settings, low and high. We're going to try low first. Exit. The A, B button at the top right of the microphone is also a menu exit. So that's good to know. That's why I was trying to figure out a minute ago how to get out of the menu. So the up, down, uh, the A, B button, once you're out of the menu, changes your band. The arrow pointing to the right that's on the left of the frequencies. And you can see that 146.52 is on low power, the L right above the 4. And it's on high power there. Low power again there. 520 is on low power as well. Probably not supposed to transmit on that frequency, but it will do it because that is because the radio is opened up. So there's 146.52 on low power. And we're going to key up and transmit right there. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's supposed to do 10 watts on low and. Uh, 25 watts on high. So 146.52, natural calling frequency for two meters. We've got almost 12 watts, 11.8 watts. KC5, HWB testing. Now I'm going to go down here to the 440 band, and we're also on low power. You see the L above the 4 at the top. Okay, about 8.5 watts. KC5, HWB testing. So now I'm going to go back to two meters. Back into the menu. Transmit power. And now you see the H above the 4 in 146. 23 and a half watts, 23 and a third watts, okay. KC5 HWB testing, okay. And now we're going to go down to 440, and we're going to change that as, there as well. And now the H is above the 4 in the 146. And since we have the 441.0 band selected, that's what we're looking at. Okay, 20, right at 20 watts. 19 and a half, 20 watts. Right there, KC5 HWB testing. So that is that. And then 440 is a little low and 2 meters right on the money. So there you go for the 25 watt mini mobile radio. You know, I'd say that's pretty good. I did, a, I did one of these power tests a while back and my, my buddy... Um, Kelly, he came by, and he's like, what would you do, what would it be if you were to change out that jumper going from the radio to the power meter from L LMR 400? And I'm like, it's this long, so probably nothing. Although I might try it. I might try it in a future video and see if it's, uh, it's going to make any difference to go LMR 400 from the radio to the power meter for a run of coax about yay long. I don't think it will, but it might be a, a cool experiment. Uh, we will see. So what do you think? Is this radio for you guys? Do you have questions that you want me to answer? Put your comments below. I'd like to know what you think. Those of you, several of these mini mobile radios that have come out from other manufacturers in the past, I've seen guys put on motorcycles. Some of them put in smaller RVs, maybe a small car. If you have a compact car, uh, you can put them in there. But 25 watts is generally, generally pretty good for working local repeaters, especially if you got a lot of repeaters in your area like I do. It's not a bad power 
for working simplex. If you're out, if you're driving in a caravan with people or you're going out to do camping or something and you're going to be in the same general vicinity as someone else, you've got an external antenna on your vehicle, your RV, and you're pushing 25 watts on simplex, you're going to be able to get out of pretty good ways. But it really depends on, you know, like everything else, everybody always asks, well, what is this good for? It really depends on what you're trying to do with it. Who has this radio? Who thinks it's cool? Who thinks it's a step in the right direction? What improvements would you like to see about it? Put your comments below. Don't forget that this is the 25-watt version. They do have a 50-watt version. If your comment is, hey, we'd like to see a more powerful one, well, guess what? They've got that. This is the smaller, compact, less powerful one. They've got a bigger, larger more powerful 50 watt version of this exact same radio. We're going to do another video on that upcoming. Thanks for watching today, guys. Y'all have a good one.